flown into Frankfurt to be with Opel on their celebration of 120 years of light. So we're here on a testing ground and uh, it's the Opel test center. So some things we're allowed to show you, other things not. We've been promised a spin in some classic cars and some current favorites as well, the Insignia and uh, the Astra, I believe. And then later on, there will be a surprise. So I'm not too sure what that's going to be, but I'm really looking forward to it. Here's a Calibra and I've been told on the on the sheet, apparently we do get to have a spin in a 4x4 Calibra. I was never back in one in the 90s. Uh, I was never in one in the 90s, uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's actually like on the inside. Um, hopefully I won't be let down by meeting my hero. That was absolutely class to Scott Buffer a spin there in this 1900s, 1920s uh, vintage Opel. Uh, it's so cold but it's so much fun because it just stinks of petrol and fumes, open air and you, they weren't going fast but it felt like it was really fast. It was brilliant. We're at this uh, like secret test centre, it's that secret but like on the way in we were told we can't use cameras and videos in certain areas so we have to be really careful. Seconds, seconds. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You, where's the brake? Whoa. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh, 
I just went for a spin there in this 1938 Admiral Classic Opal. Oh my god, so heavy, like zero power steering. Yeah, the handbrake is down where we opened the boot now, the bonnet now, sorry. And like just crazy comfortable, and you feel like you're going a million miles an hour, I suppose, because you've very little control over the whole thing. Um, uh, you know, that was stunning just to see that that was a top of the range car in its day and something that people would have looked up to to owning and it's just such a stunning example of automotive history uh, that uh yeah wow what, a, what an amazing car so we're at opal's test center in dudenhofen and basically we're going to be showing examples of the lighting range that opal has been developing over the years and especially this evening so we're going to be taking out on taking out on some night drives and uh, so it's just starting to get dark now. We've got a presentation next. We've been in a couple of classic cars and shown around, but um, we've a presentation to go and then we'll be taken out on a night drive. The mainstream B segment with the Matrix IntelliLux LED headlamp. The tail lamp in full LED technology in the mainstream B segment. So we were just in the presentation and Opel basically went through all of their lighting technologies uh, over the past 120 years and how they've developed more recently. So what's happening now is everybody's going out in um, some of the more recent cars and to experiencing light driving to see what the lighting technology is like. So they have like a couple of Opals, some Astras and then later on we've been promised to spin in the dark in the older vehicles, some of the classics to see how little light that they were providing on the roads ahead and how dangerous it was and how much lighting is a factor of safety and road safety. There's like no light in here whatsoever. I just went around the track in this and it felt like zero visibility. It was amazing to be honest. Like safe, no safety features, non-existent. Uh, it was cold with the cabrio. Um, it was just unreal. Like I, I, it just feels so much safer now. I'm so thankful for the safety systems that are on board cars because that really brought it home as to how unsafe and how they, they didn't think about safety at all. The seats just moved. The gears were all completely opposite to what you'd expect. The suspension, at least it was there, I suppose. And going over rough roads and the feedback to the steering wheel and everything was just unreal. What a valuable learning experience in uh, testing all of these classic cars. Going from something from the 30s up to the 60s, then the 90s. Um, I got into a convertible was the first car and it was cold and rattly and bouncy and the next car was from the 60s it was a bit warmer better suspension uh, the steering was very thin um, and a little bit of play in uh, the steering feel feedback and then got into uh, one of my favorite cars from when i was quite young was the uh, 1990s uh, opal calibra it's the opal calibra it's a two liter four by four and it's aged quite well, but I, the mileage said something like nearly 1,900 miles, kilometers. Uh, even still, like, that doesn't seem right unless it was a rebuilt engine or something. But anyway, the suspension was good, the steering was good, still a little bit of feedback. I don't think it was the sportiest car in its day, but even still, to get to drive that car was just one of my dreams, to be perfectly honest. It was beautiful, I really enjoyed it, just put a smile on my face. Um, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get into one, but wow, what an experience. Um, and then going through all of these cars and seeing how the lighting has evolved, the cars have evolved, the technology, the safety systems, the amount of effort that goes into putting in these safety systems, and it's greatly appreciated because um, each step goes closer to making people safer, to people uh, considering uh, their driving styles as well. 
and just general all round um, safety and knowledge of driving and night driving and the difference in the lighting systems as well between the cars was just crazy and I think they took a step back with the Calibre because the lighting seemed to go minimal again but then uh, for the generations after that they, they worked on it like the high beam was really good but the dip beam was just like very little like it was like going back 30 years nearly um, but the leaps that they're taking in technology now for the lighting systems is fantastic. Uh, 